something I like to use for therapy is a listening box. Uh, my listening box are objects that correspond with the sound. I put lots of my things in a little container. It's easier to transport in my car. Uh, it's got a handle. Uh, and these sounds are all different sounds that a child can pull out. And when the child pulls it out, I mimic the sound. So if he pulled out this, which I use as a kitty cat, I say meow and the child imitates. Uh, he might pull out uh, something like this, and it's called round and round and round. But the favorite thing that the children like is my slide. So we use a little person, and we work on up, 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 whee! These are very easy to put together. I often look at parents' homes and to see what kind of objects that they might have. Uh, and we can, I can help create their own listening box with them. Uh, so uh, it's, it's kind of something I use at the very beginning of a lot of therapy sessions. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is my listening noisemakers. And this is my listening noisemakers. Again, same kind of box, got a handle. Um, and this is when we just work on a lot of listening skills. I have things that have different types of sound. Loud sounds, kind of soft sounds. Um, it allow I use this a lot when I'm putting hearing aids on children so that they've got their hands busy and they have things to listen to. The bell. And again, I just use this as a way to work on listening, we might use it for auditory condition play, uh, lots of different um, activities that I can use with this. I also help parents try to start and create their own noisemaker type box. Something else that we love to use are puppets. And I often look for a puppet that has a sound. So this is their favorite. So it's listening. Stop. Don't hear it. Listen. So puppets are good because you can try to help them mimic the, the, the mouth movements. I can hide it and just be talking and see if they can listen. And we look and look and look and bring it out. And then I let them put their hand in it. Uh, but puppets, even without sounds, are really, really good. Something else that we enjoy using is a as a, a playhouse any type of playhouse that's small somewhat movable sometimes i've actually made a, a house out of a shoe box um, and what we do is with this type of of toy we do a lot of knock 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 open open and we put people in shut the door and listen knock knock uh, lots of opportunities for modeling and imitation. This one just happens to have something that you can put them to bed. Shh. So we work a lot on that SH sound. We look on where, where did he go? Where did he go? Look, open. Uh, so this is uh, this is somewhat old toy, uh, but any type of little playhouse will work because what you're working on. Uh, are just their routine kind of things, they, where they eat, where they sleep, uh, knocking on the door, listening to some people knock. There's lots of different ways that you could use a small dollhouse. The last thing I'm going to show you is something that um, lots of my children enjoy doing. This is my baby box. I get a clear bin because we're going to give this baby a bath. So we take little baby Susie and fill this up with water, take all the clothes off, and we give her a bath. So a bath is something that all children take. So they, there's a lot of language that we can bed in that. So we give her a bath, we have a towel, we dry her off. I keep all my things in here, we feed her, we have a diaper, we wrap her up with clothes. Uh, the baby has to be a baby that's not cloth, it has to be a baby that's all plastic. Um, but there's so many ways that we can embed signing, auditory, listening. Uh, I use baby uh, lotion and we rub it on her and we're making sounds like ah and ooh and ee. 
We, I, they helped me dress it, so we got some fine motor skills. We named some of the things that we're putting on them. So there's many opportunities to embed language. Uh, but this is usually one of their very favorite things. Kind of messy. I uh, bring a plastic tablecloth usually, put that down so I, I don't feel intrusive. Again, something very simple that families can make their own. I often try to uh, show them how they can, this is something that they can uh, model and use at home. A lot of times I'll bring toys in that when the family says, I don't know what to buy for their birthday, then I'll bring in some things that I have and show them how they can use it. And often the parent will use that activity and then be able to go buy the child something for their birthday or Christmas or something like that.